Hello, 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 Instagram. Hello, sorry everyone. I was putting on my um <laughs> I was putting on my do not disturb. Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? It's Dr. Yebo from Atlanta, Georgia. I hope you're all doing well. I hope your week is going well. I hope um the kids are rounding up school nicely um because for us in atlanta the kids are all finishing school this month i know it's different in the northeast on the west coast i know it's different in other countries but my stepsons and my younger daughter are going to be out of school this month so summer holidays are incumbent upon us so hi everyone as you're joining just tell me where you're joining in from I wanted to come and have a chat with um, women. And of course, if you're a man, please don't go anywhere. I want you to stay on this live. And I want you to chime in as well, because um, for me, I want to keep conversations open. Of course, healthy, respectful conversations. You know, we can choose to disagree, but we have to do it respectfully, right? When we start calling each other names, then that's where the problem starts, right? Then that's where you know that there's some lack of emotional intelligence coming in. You know, you don't have to engage people in a discussion and start calling them names, right? Or using negative adjectives for them. We can have intelligent conversations and that's how we're actually going to be able to improve our life that's how we're going to improve the future of our children that's how we're going to improve the lives of black people all over the world that's how we're going to be able to improve the lives of women all over the world because if i'm passionate about a group of people you guys know i'm very very passionate about all women all women whether they're black or white or asian or hispanic or mixed I'm passionate about or Middle Eastern or Persian. I'm passionate about all women. I want all women to thrive, to be the best that they can be. But sometimes, you know, when you you become a leader, you become outspoken and you become somebody who is doing that, of course, there's going to be some opposition, which is fine. You know, for me, <laughs> if you know me well, none of those things get me rattled. I'm happy to engage in conversations with people. I just don't do it once it starts to get disrespectful. For me, once the conversation starts to get disrespectful, I totally disengage. I don't... I don't engage people who are disrespectful. Once name calling starts or once the conversation starts to be disrespectful, I totally disengage. And in fact, with some people, I actually block them. So, you know, my goal is to help women all over the world make God proud. Again, I'm a God girl. I'm a Jesus girl. I don't carry my religion on my back. But I do believe in the word of God. I read the Bible. I meditate over the Bible. You know, I'm a Jesus girl. So, and I was Muslim before. Those of you who know my story know that I was born into a Muslim family. So I've experienced both religions. But at the end of the day, when all is said and done, I just want to fulfill my purpose on this earth. And I believe that as I've gotten older, I'm now, I'm 52 years old. I know without any inch or any doubt that my purpose on this earth is to enhance and elevate the lives of women all over the world. But as it happens, I'm a black woman, okay? I'm as black as black can be. I'm a black woman. I'm happily proud to be black. But, you know, God blessed me with my blackness and God blessed me to be an African woman. I'm Nigerian-American. So automatically, I'm going to attract more, women, more black women to my platform. More black women are going to be attracted to my platform. And in fact, more black women of African descent are going to be more attracted to my platform and i love it but my platform is open i have many white women in my community that i totally adore and respect i have many asian women in my community i have many uh, uh persian middle eastern women mixed women hispanic women i have women of all color and all races in my community and i totally respect and adore all of them right so i wanted to come on today because I know that 
I've been posting a lot about femininity and masculinity. And honestly, I will tell you the truth that if you can honestly, you, you, you know, and you're free to challenge it, not to agree with it, that's fine. You know, that's fine. But if you honestly can balance your feminine traits, and your masculine traits. And I see that the, you, you guys told me where you were from. There's Maryland in the house. There's Nigeria in the house. South Africa in the house. Thank you so much. Somebody said they're graduating on Saturday from KCMO, but not feeling excited. Mm. Why are you not excited about your graduation? Tell me why you're not excited. And I don't know what KCMO is. Can you tell me what KCMO is? Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. So, you know, Honestly, if you're able to, and this is coming from a 52 year old woman who is very wise, I consider myself wise. You can, I, you can, we can, choose, we can agree to disagree. If you can balance your feminine and your masculine traits and master where to use your feminine traits and where to use your masculine traits, you will be a well rounded happy peaceful woman i'm telling you but a lot of women still resist that <laughs> okay a lot of women a lot of black women and i'm black so i can address black women and if you don't like to hear it if you're triggered by this you're welcome to unfollow me it's fine if I only end up with five followers, if my followers go from 50,000 to five followers, and it's only those five followers that connect with me and align with me, it's fine. It's fine. But honestly, if we can master where to use our feminine traits and where to use our masculine traits, we will all thrive and be happy. I'm a perfect example. Even before I knew what feminine traits and masculine traits were, even before I knew that, I think because I was raised with a woman who actually balanced those two traits well. And I'll explain. I did, when I was young, I didn't know what feminine and masculine traits were, but all my friends who know me from when I was young know that I'm a very girly girl. My best friend, Claire, she still teases me today about how I walk like a lady and how I always sit down like a lady with my legs crossed. So I'm a very feminine girl. I love dresses. You guys can see I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my mini dress again. I love dresses. I'm in my 50s. I still love dresses. Even when I wear jeans, my top is going to be something with, you know, frills or something. I'm very feminine. I've been like that since I was young. So that's my feminine trait. However, since I was young, and those of you who know me from primary school, secondary school, since I was young, I was what we call in Nigeria an efiko of the highest order. <laughs> I studied hard, I was focused, I was always at the top of my class. I would all, and here's Fumi, Fumi is coming. My Fumi is one of my old time friends. So Fumi can testify. I was always, I'm not making things up. There are many people who follow me here who knew me from childhood. So if I'm lying, they'll say, ha, huh, that Dr. Yabo is a liar. But what would I gain from lying? I was always at the top of my class. I studied hard, I was focused. I, went, I entered medical school at the age of 16 with very high marks. My jam score was very high, you know. So I've always been at the top of everything I've done in my career and in my work. Even in residency, as soon as I got to, well, I did residency in England, all of the places where I did my rotations, it was praises, praises, praises about how good I was, all of that, all of that. <laughs> Thank you, for me. So for me, testifying that when I got to America, as soon as I got to my residency program, it was all praises, praises again. Oh, you're so smart. You're so hardworking. And then boom, I was, uh, what's it called? I was elevated and promoted to become a chief resident in my third year, which hardly ever happens. Most chief residents do their chief residency in their fourth year. So, you know, I have always been on the feminine side, using my femininity like God said, I should, you know, I mean, again, I'm sure I inherited some of that from my mom, but my mom was a very feminine woman, 
But even though she was born in 1932, and this was, you know, my mommy has so rest in peace. Both my parents are no longer alive. They both passed at the age of 86 a few years ago. But my mom was very feminine. But my mom was also a very, very hardworking, ambitious businesswoman. She made a lot of money. I've said this over and over like a broken record. This is a woman who couldn't write English, who couldn't speak English. So I watched her. This is why we, I always say our kids are watching. My mom balanced her feminine and masculine very well. With my dad, she was very feminine. She did some cooking, but my dad also helped around the house. My dad saw to our education. My dad drove us around, you know, because my mom couldn't drive. My dad drove us around. They shared the household duties so beautifully. My dad supported my mom. My dad, a lot of my young, my old time friends know how my dad used to serve my mom. Even when they would come on holiday to America and we had three or four levels in our town home at the time, my dad would walk all the way up to the kitchen, even in his 70s, go and make tea and put Jacob's cream crackers on the tray and walk all the way up to serve my mom in the attic, you know, in the bedroom in the attic where they were staying. So they, my mom balanced her feminine and masculine energy so well. She was a beautiful, sexy, I don't know the sexy parts, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they had a good sex life, but no child wants to think about their parents having sex. But, you know, I could see the way that I was young, but I observed them. They were, they laughed together. They flirted together. They were always, you know, like touching and flirting with each other. My mom was very feminine. When she would dress up to go to the parties, oh my gosh, she would be like the talk of the party, looking so beautiful and everything. So, but then she worked hard. She and my dad were in business together. My mom would go to her shop on Lagos Island from morning till evening. Sometimes she would come home at lunchtime to make sure she we were there at lunchtime. My mom worked so hard. She was also in business with her older sister. They sold lace, they sold gold. My mom built a lot of houses in Lagos. My dad also built a lot of houses in Lagos. So this is how you balance your feminine and masculine energy. She didn't say that because she was a powerful woman who was hardworking. She wasn't going to be soft and feminine with her husband, right? She didn't, she didn't tell her husband, you can't tell me what to do. Who are you to tell me what to do? Or, you know, like, I'm not going to dress up to be attractive to you. Or I'm not. She dressed up to be attractive for herself, but I'm pretty sure my mom didn't teach me these things. I'm talking from observing. This is why observing is so important. What we say is not what matters. It's what we do. So I observed my mom, but I could tell that she did all the feminine things. She dressed up. She always looked nice and sultry and feminine. Even when she tied her gilly and put her makeup and her perfume, she all, you know, she carried herself with grace with poise and with confidence. You know, I, at that time, there was nothing like the way we dress up now, where our boobs are out and our butts are out. Women did not used to dress like that. Please, that's another life for another day. You know, you're not a feminine woman until all your boobs are out and your nipples are almost out and your butt is out. You know, life has totally gone crazy. <laughs> so our parents then they were where they are and booba they were covered up at the most maybe the lace will be a little bit see-through and maybe you'd see their sleep right but there was no woman who was putting their boobs out and putting their nipples out that's not femininity that's called craziness okay if you want to challenge it come to my dm that's not femininity that's called craziness so for me a woman of high value is a woman who knows how to balance her feminine traits and her masculine traits, who is soft and feminine and supportive of her husband. I'm not saying a pushover. Okay. Do I look like a pushover to you guys? I'm not a pushover. My mom was not a pushover because you're being feminine and soft and being supportive of your husband doesn't mean you're a pushover. You guys get it wrong. You know, when you're dealing with a high value man, like somebody like my dad or somebody like, you know, like my husband now, not my ex, that's another topic for or my husband now, a high value masculine man who is a, a supportive equal partner, you know, you, you, you don't have to be so aggressive. You don't have to say, you can't tell me not to wear my wig. I'm wearing a wig. 
my husband likes it and i will wear it and me too i like it <laughs> oh, yeah? i like my long hair there was a time many of you know that in my 30s i wore my hair as pixie cut but i got over that after a while and i started to wear weaves and i honestly got addicted to long hair i felt like i looked more feminine more alluring more sexy in long hair even before i met my husband i've been wearing weaves and wigs for a long time so yeah i love my long hair and my husband also happens to love it i just bought this one this is a new wig it just came last week i ordered it it's a brand new wig I will order new ones because I like it. So, you know, it's okay. Women, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be sexy and feminine and supportive and do the things your husband likes as long as it's reciprocated. It's okay. Obviously, if you have a husband who says you look nasty, you look terrible, go and get plastic surgery. No, I would have left that husband a long time ago. It's the tone. It's how it's said. Nobody is saying that a husband, do I look like somebody? No, it's you guys tell me, please. Do I come across as somebody that is a pushover? Yes or no? <laughs> okay. You guys may not know me, but the people who know me, for me clear a lot of my old friends and even those of you who've been watching me on instagram do i look like a okay do i look like a pushover please answer do i look like somebody that some husband will be kicking around the place please <laughs> no 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 i know i want you guys to answer somebody says i can feel your enoughness from here i don't as feminine as I am, I don't put up with nonsense. So that's how to balance your feminine and masculine. You have boundaries. You become a high value man so that men will respect you, right? They will respect you. They will adore you. They will all crave over you and want you in their life because they're like, wow, Look at this woman. She's soft. She's feminine. She carries herself well. And I'm not talking about size. I'm not talking about I'm a size 4 or somebody is a size 2. You can be a size 22 and be sexier and more feminine than a woman who's size 2. There are many women who are size 2, who are slim, and they are very aggressive and masculine in their personality. And that's very repulsive to men. Hello? Hello? So I really wanted to come out today to talk to you guys, okay? <laughs> I wanted to come out today to talk to you guys that it's not about size. This is why you'll see a man who leaves a woman who is size 2, who is pretty and slim and goes to marry somebody who is a size 20. Why? Because of exactly what I'm talking about. It's not about size. It's not about looks. Well, yeah, of course, you have to look good, you have to dress well, you have to smell good, all of that. If you're a woman who is, you know, who's on the chubby side, or are you a size 18, size 20, but you know how to balance your feminine and masculine energies, men will be running to you. But a lot of us women, especially a lot of us black women, I'm sorry I'm black, and I'll say it. There's many people who will never say what I'm saying here. If you have a problem with it, don't disrespect me just unfollow me okay don't disrespect me just unfollow me because if you if you disrespect me you will eventually unfollow me because i will block you okay so and you i'm, I'm not making this up you guys can go and research there are many books about feminine and masculine energy there's a lot of uh, uh content on youtube on google about how women who are able to balance their feminine and masculine energies are the most attractive women to high value women. A woman who is always on guard, who is always on defensive, like men can't tell me what to do. Who is that man that will tell me what to do? He can't tell me what to do. I'll do whatever I want. If I want to do this, I'll do. That's repulsive. Yes, you may attract jerks. You may attract men and many of you end up attracting jerks. You'll be saying they're narcissists, they're this. Yes, there are many men who are narcissists, but a lot of those men you call narcissists are not narcissists. Okay, they're not narcissists. 
It's because you don't have boundaries and you don't know how to balance your feminine and masculine energy. If you're using all your masculinity to deal with a guy, okay? And using all your femininity with your work, with your business, with your career, with your purpose, that's where your problems will come. And this is what a lot of us black women get wrong. We're too on the defensive. We're too on the guard. We're too much like, I'm not going to let him do this. I'm not going to let... That's very masculine. <laughs> That's very masculine. You need to relax, okay? If you guys read my carousel today, relax. You're looking at Dr. Yabo, who I'm feminine, very, very feminine with my husband. I'm a naturally feminine woman. You guys see, I wear dresses and all. I'm just a very naturally feminine woman. Especially if I see that a guy makes me a priority like my husband did. It, you know, my husband made me a priority. He was very loving. He just was everything I was looking for. Oh my goodness. I became the most feminine woman I could be. I didn't chase my husband when we were dating. He did all the texting and calling. He just did everything. You know, he, he's such a sweetheart. He helps me around the house. We're both business owners. He has his own business that is doing well. I have my own businesses that are doing well. We're building wealth together. We're equal partners. But, you know, we, we laugh together. We, you know, we have a good sense of humor together. He loves my femininity. He's very flirtatious. I'm very flirtatious towards him. I don't hold up a guard. You know, when he tells me the things he, like, I, he likes, I do those. When I tell him the things he likes, he, it's like he was about to start a meeting now. True story. He was about to start a Zoom meeting with one of his clients. And he came to me and he said, honey, do you think I should wear this shirt? Or should I wear another shirt? And I'm like, oh, that shirt doesn't look formal enough. You should wear one of those other shirts. And he's like, oh, thank you. And he came up to change. And he came up to change. You know, women, when you need to relax, you're not going to find equal partners. You're not going to find men who will treat you well, who will love and adore you and carry you like the biggest, rarest diamond. If you always are triggered, if you're always easily triggered and easily angered and you're always like, you can't tell me to do that yet. We're not saying that a man is ordering you around. I'm not going to be with a man who orders me around. Never. I'm sure you can see that. But it's not about ordering you around. It's about taking a deep breath. Okay? Being the feminine woman that God created you to be. Being your husband's support partner. Being sexy and alluring to him. Having a good sex life. Having your husband chasing you around the house like a rabbit or like a kitten. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? I'm sure as women, we like that. But do you want a husband who you are not physically attracted, attractive to? Do you want a husband where every minute, no matter what he says, you're fighting and you're like, I'm not going to do that. Who are you to say? You know, it's a different thing. If your husband is not making you a priority, if he's not helping, if he's not loving, if he's cheating on you, that's different. That's not what I'm talking about. But you know, how are you going to bring out the best in your husband, the best in your man, if you're always, if you, you always have a guard up? <laughs> no, it's true. Zainab is ran, laughing at running around like a kitten. It's true. If you're so attractive to your husband, he will not, you know, he will just want to have his hands on you all the time. He will not be able to take your hands off him. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound? So if it's mutual, if it's mutual, but at the end of the day, women, we have to do our part. We have to do our part. If you're constantly waiting for men to do their part, then it's going to be push and pull. We have to do our part. We have to do our part. I'm repeating it. I'm not saying women should be a pushover. Women have to learn how to balance their feminine. You guys saw my post. If you guys engaged, listen to this. If you guys engaged on my business and branding and financial freedom posts, as much as you engage on my relationship and uh, men and physical looks post, all of you will be cashing in towards your millions by now. 
all of you. Okay? But because 8 to 9 out of 10 women exaggerate their masculine traits when it comes to relationships, when it comes to physical looks, when it comes to their softness and femininity, okay? And then when it comes to their career and business and purpose, they exaggerate their feminine uh, qualities. They give up easily. They are looking for cheap stuff, looking for free stuff. They are lazy. So, you know, Zainab says, reminds me of this saying, you have to come into the relationship as a whole and not looking for someone to complete you. Thank you, Zainab. I, I love you, Zainab. Zainab, it seems like you're, you're, you're really, really wise. Zainab says, there's a saying that says, you have to come into the relationship as a whole. Women, go into the relationship as a whole. Learn from people who know. Come and hire me to coach you. Those of you who come into my DM, you're frustrated with your dating life, you're frustrated with your marriage, you're frustrated with money. Come, let me teach you. Okay? Come, let me teach you how you will stop having heartache. Yes, I have been through a divorce before. Absolutely. I'm not perfect. But what led to my divorce is different. Okay? It is different. I had some in-law issues i had some mommy's boy issues and i could not compete with my mother-in-law anymore i can't you know when you have a mother-in-law who is competing with you and your husband at some point you're going to say carry your son and go <laughs> right that was my situation i'm like carry your son and go i'm not if you want to marry your son go and marry your son so my situation was different i'm not saying i'm perfect i've evolved i've evolved I used to be a lot more stubborn and more headstrong when I was younger. Absolutely. Uh, but I've evolved. If you're not getting better as you get older, then what's the point of life? What's the point? So after all that preamble, that was a very long preamble. And please note, guys, the replay of this video is not going to be on my Instagram. My live replays, most of them, not all. <coughs> my live replays are now going to be on my youtube so if you are not yet subscribed to my youtube please go and subscribe it's my name dr yabo webzel okay so now what are the four things that women struggle with the most first of all before i go into the four things guys right there uh, ladies write this down life is all about choices okay right this morning i chose to come and do this live for you right and i'm doing it so life is all about number one choices number two focus what are you focused on i'm focused on helping women become the best they can be that's number two number three what are your day-to-day -day routines what does your day look like if I come to your house and I see what your day-to-day -day routine is like, then I'll know what is important to you. So number three is what are your day-to-day -day routines? And then number four is what kind of intentional action do you take every day? So if you missed that, I guess you can watch the replay of this video on my YouTube. But life is all about choices. It's about what are you focused on? It's about what do your day-to-day -day routines look like? If I come and look for you and your day-to-day -day routine consists of you laying around on your sofa, browsing through Instagram every day, and you're saying you don't have time to make your life better, there you go, okay? And then what intentional action are you taking in your life? If you can write those down in your journal today and ponder them, what choices do you make? What do you focus on? What are your day-to-day -day routines? And what intentional action do you actually take and complete? This morning, I wanted to come and do a live. Okay, right? That was my choice. I'm totally focused on helping women get, get better at doing life, right? What are my routines? Well, my routines are my routine. This morning, I already had a 45-minute workout session with my trainer. I've taken a shower. I've had breakfast. 
I've already uh, what what I've done so much. I've already talked with my personal assistants who went to my practice to uh, drop some things off for me. I have watered my flowers. I've watered my plants. I've done so much, and it's only twelve noon. So my day to day routines show what I'm what I, I'm focused about achieving. And then what is the intentional action I take? This live I'm doing is the intentional action one of the intentional actions i've done a lot of intentional actions i love flowers so i've watered my flowers i've watered my house plants i i said bye to my daughter when she was going to do her test at school i've spent some time talking to my husband i've done some admin work for my practice that's the intentional action thank you triumphant brown girl for typing god bless you triumphant black brown girl typed for me life is all about choices focus day-to-day -to -day routines and intentional actions that you're taking in your life. God bless you. I'm going to pin that. Triumphant brown girl, thank you so much for being my helper. So now, I love that you knew to sacrifice for your peace of mind. Oh yes, so now I'm going to give you the juice of this life, okay? The juice of this life, the five life issues. Triumphant brown girl, you can maybe type for me again. Let me see. Reminds, oh, okay, no, I've read that already. Triumphant uh, brown girl, the five life issues women struggle with most. Number one, love and relationships. Number one, women struggle most with their marriages, their dating life, their relationship life, all of those things. So number one is love life. A lot of women, at least out of all the hundreds of DMs I get in a month, the number one thing that most women struggle with is their love life. Their love life. They just don't know how to be happy in their marriage. They don't know how to be happy in dating. They struggle with their love life. Number two, they struggle with their self-esteem, self-love, self-confidence, body image issues that's all number two that's all the same thing number two self-esteem self-confidence body image issues self-love issues that's number two number three women struggle with having peace i'm sure you guys didn't expect that number three a lot of women have a, have a chaotic spirit a lot of women are not at peace with their life and that's the problem a lot of women are not at peace so number three i don't know if somebody's typing for me but number three women struggle with having peace number one was love life number two was our self-esteem self-love self-confidence body and image issues number three is peace most women don't have peace they don't know how to settle the spirit in there and just have peace if you if anybody is on this life today and is struggling with peace please go and buy my 14 dollars book on amazon it's called permanent happiness it will at least start helping you on how to start finding peace in your life permanent happiness by dr yabo ujikutu my maiden name is on there go and get that on amazon number four number four women struggle with money 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 women struggle with money issues a lot of women are not financially free a lot of black women are not financially free they have bad credit scores they don't have any wealth they, they don't have a retirement account they don't have any savings account they hate their job their business isn't doing well they want to start a business they can't start the business they are not motivated you know so it's like money 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 number four money 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 issues then number five women struggle with their health and wellness Number five, women struggle with their health and wellness. Why are Tammy and I holistic transformational coaches? Because of all these five problems I just listed. You cannot help a woman 
attract love and maintain a good loving equal partnership with the man if her self-esteem is low if her self-confidence is low if she's battling with body image issues if she's battling with self-love if she's battling with health and wellness if she doesn't have peace in her spirit she can she will not be able and, she, uh, and yeah money and if her money life is suffering that woman will not be able to attract a good man okay self-esteem women are suffering from self-esteem you cannot help a woman develop high self-esteem if her love life is struggling if her money life is struggling if she doesn't have peace in her spirit and if her health and wellness are suffering you will be wasting your time if you're trying to help her build self-esteem okay and then the third one peace a woman cannot have peace in her mind if every day she she's she's asking god for a good man if every day she's thinking she's not worthy if every day she's thinking she will never attract a good guy if every day she's like what's happening to me i'm too old i'm too short i'm too fat i'm too thin i'm too this i can't have you know or she's in a marriage where she blames herself for everything her husband is cheating on her but she's like oh he's cheating because i'm too fat i'm too thin i'm too the you know so women cannot have peace if their love life isn't going well they cannot have peace if their if their self-esteem is low they can't have peace if they're broke if they're broke if they have to ask their husbands for money for tampon they will not have peace if their health and wellness is not doing well their doctor just told them you're overweight you now have type 2 diabetes your blood pressure is out of control you know all of these things happening to you is from a poor lifestyle how can they have peace they can't have peace okay then the fourth thing money <laughs> try helping a woman make money and sustain the money try helping her start a business and sustain the business if her love life is struggling try just try it will not work <laughs> it will not work i'm bringing in my niger accent here i didn't say walk oh it will not work as in w-o-r-k you want to try and help a woman make money and she's struggling with her love life struggling with her marriage you're wasting your time you'll first drop that money goal and help her figure out her love life first you want to help a woman make money who has low self-esteem low self-love low self-confidence body image issues you're wasting your time you first have to work on her self-esteem first you want to help a woman make money that doesn't have peace that her whole spirit is in chaos her spirit is filled with jealousy and resentment and all sorts of things she won't be able to make money no you want to help a woman who is struggling with her health and wellness make money it won't last even if that business comes up for six months or one year it will just disappear into thin air then you want to help a woman have health and wellness whose life who is struggling in her love life struggling with her self-esteem struggling with having peace struggling with having money you're wasting your time she'll continuously struggle with chronic health problems so this is why i'm here for you <laughs> okay i'm a 52 year old woman i've lived through many life phases you can keep on commenting on my posts as much as you want you can keep on being stubborn you can keep on arguing whatever you want to argue about you can argue about it okay you can argue about it all right i know the advice i'm trained in so many things i can help you with your money life with your love life with your self-esteem your self-confidence how to balance your feminine and masculine energies i can help you with your health and wellness i can help you with how to find peace okay if only you just take a deep breath listen understand that you have to invest in yourself if you invest in a business coach 
without finding somebody who's also highly trained as a life coach, the business will not work. Okay? If you invest in somebody who is the best marketing and sales coach, and I'm talking to women here, why? Because with women, our whole life is jumbled up into one bucket. <clears throat> Money, health and wellness, peace, love life, everything is in here. For men, they can have five separate compartments and their life will still do well. With us women, we jumble everything up. So if you, you can find the best business coach on earth, if that person is not qualified to be a life coach or a lifestyle coach that also helps you with your self-esteem, your love life, your relationships, your self-confidence, your self-esteem, your health and wellness, your attitude, your personality, your emotional intelligence, your femininity, your masculinity, you're wasting your time. As a woman, you're wasting your time. I have seen many, many, many businesses around me in Atlanta, female-owned businesses crash because of this. Because women think that they can have a business, but have a bad marriage, have low self-esteem, have low self-confidence, have all of those things, but their business will survive. No, we're not, we're not built like that as women. We're not. We're not built like that. So this is why my, myself and Tammy's coaching is unique. Tammy and I, we strategize every day, several times a day in our DM, and we have discussed this over and over. We examine the DMs that women send us. We think about our own life. We think about the books and studies we've read. And we've come to the conclusion that niching down cannot help women. Oh, that's us. Not everybody can be a niche up coach. Please. Don't everybody don't stand niching up because are you qualified? If you're qualified to be a business coach, an image coach, a health and wellness coach, a self-confidence coach, coach, a public speaking coach right? A peace coach, <laughs> a dating coach. If you, are co if you feel like you're qualified to do that, then you can niche up, but not everybody's qualified to do that. But if you want a business coach or a career coach to, be, to work with and be successful, you all, they also have to be well-trained as a life coach. Because us women, we have a lot of life issues that are blocking us. A lot. A lot. And us black women, we have even more than white women. You can counter me if you want. <laughs> okay? You can counter me. And I'm a black woman, so I know. Us black women have a lot of mess to sieve through. We have a lot of mess to sieve through. Because, you know, a lot of us are very resistant to change. A lot of us don't have a growth mindset. We're very stubborn. We know this, we know. Well, if you know everything, then how come you're not thriving in your life? Hello? If you know everything, then why are you not thriving? If you know everything, why are you not thriving? Okay? So this is my video. This is my message to you. Those are the five life issues that I wanted to discuss. If you want to watch, thank you, Triumphant Brown, Brown Girl. If you want, I'm going to pin this just for the couple minutes before I leave. Thank you so much for typing. If you want to watch this video again, if you're just joining late, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. It is Dr. Yabo Webzel. This video will be on my YouTube channel in a few minutes. If you want to watch it again, please share it. Once it's on my YouTube, please share it with, my, with your friends. Tag your friends on it, share it with them because this will change their lives. Again, you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to. I will go to bed and snore at night. I'll have peace because I know that I've done my part. I've delivered the message. I've said what I need to say. You can resist it and not listen. That's fine. But you can listen. You can make it a choice. You can focus on it, okay? You can pay me, yes. I charge 15,000, yes. Tammy and I charge 15,000. If you feel that that's too much, that's ridiculous, then automatically you're not a client, right? So, no, no, you guys think you can come and intimidate me. You can, some of you will post, are you only helping the rich? Are you only, no, I'm not only helping the rich. However, I'm helping women 
who know the value of investing in themselves. You don't have to be rich to raise $15,000 to change your life, okay? I wasn't rich when I was 32 years old and I get, got off my butt and I went to look for $350,000 to change my life. If I didn't do that 19 years ago, I won't be able to be here today as an evolving or evolved woman, as a visionary, as somebody who can come out here and influence you guys and help you out if I didn't invest in myself, okay? And I want to create a legacy for all the little black girls that are coming behind me, okay? So that they'll have a better world. So if you think $15,000 for eight weeks is too expensive, just keep your peace. Go and hire a coach for $2,000. It's fine. You don't have to come to myself and Tammy's platform and disrespect us because we're not going to lower our prices for you. So again, this is what I say. A lot of women have chaotic spirits, <laughs> you know? Why go and challenge somebody's price? Just move on and go and hire a cheap coach. Rather than Why are you worrying yourself, you know? So to hire Tammy and myself, our price is $15,000. We're holistic transformational coaches. We will help you with your business, your lifestyle, your image, your self-esteem, your love and relationships, your health and wellness, developing a personal brand, everything. We will. And if you don't want to do all the eight weeks, you want to prorate to four weeks, you can come and hire us for 7500 for four weeks. Oh, right now you only have money for two weeks. Our doors are open. Come on. But that's the least we'll do. There's no point paying for one week. Then you're wasting your time. If you want to start off with two weeks with Tammy and I, come on, our doors are open, 3750 But you can't come and money shame us and think you're going to get away with it. You'll just be causing yourself chaos in your spirit. Because to hire me alone for eight weeks is $25,000. Yeah. And my price is not going down. It's going to keep going up. Why? Because I know my value. And I want to teach each and every one of you women out there to know your value and to charge for your value. I'm not doing this just for myself. I'm not charging 25000 just for myself. I want to set an example for women that if you do all these things properly, if you, go and hire, if you come and hire Tammy and myself and work with the best coaches, your life will change as well. Okay. So you can criticize the 15,000 from here till whenever it will be in front of you that my price will go up to hundred thousand and you still be there sitting in your living room being mad at me. <laughs> this is what I'm saying that women struggle with peace. We fight with the things that we don't need to fight for. You're fighting somebody who has created her brand, who has created her value over years, you know, who knows what she's offering. You're fighting with her. Why? You're just stealing your peace because that person's price is not going to go down for you. So those are the five issues that women deal with. I hope this video helped you. I hope it helps you think. I hope you'll go back to my YouTube and watch it, watch it, watch it over and over. Ponder it, think about it. And then when you've taken a deep breath and you've calmed down, and you're not being triggered or being angry anymore, then you come to my DM or Tammy's DM and you tell us which program you'd like to sign for, either to work with us for eight weeks at 15,000 or four weeks at 7,500 or two weeks at 3,750. Okay, that's it. Life is very easy. You make your choices. You focus on your choices. You create your day-to-day -day routine around your choices. And you take intentional action. And whatever you're taking intentional action on, that is how your life will be. If you're going to everybody's Instagram, fighting with them on their posts so that they will listen with you and you're using your aggression and your triggered nature, that is how your life will be. And me, I will just be sitting in my living room, drinking my tea, growing my businesses, building wealth, traveling the world, and enjoying my husband and kids. And I'll just be watching you getting triggered and just getting angry for nothing. <laughs> okay? So, choices. What's the next one? Choices, focus. 
routines have you guys have made me forget my four things choices focus day-to-day -day routines and intentional action and the five life issues we all need to work on from today love and relationships self-esteem self-confidence self-love body image issues peace of mind money which is related to business and career and wealth building and financial freedom and health and wellness and who are the coaches that are qualified to teach you all of those five and more tammy and myself period that's all i can say you can go and hire a business coach are they going to be qualified life coach that's i don't know you can hire a like go and hire a life coach that has certificates from all the biggest life coaching institutions if they don't have the experience behind them they won't teach you nada okay certificates as a as a coach is not everything it's good it's not everything if you want to go and look for a life coach that has five certificates from all the biggest life coaching places go and look for them that's fine but if you want to make money or you want love look for a holistic transformational coach tammy and i will help you but we don't coach for free so please don't come to our dm if you're looking for free coaching okay women i love you all you know you guys know that i love you all everything i say everything i post is out of love for you but i'm not going to deceive anybody or patch anybody up or put a band-aid on anyone if we want to change as black women if we want to reduce this massive wealth gap between us black women and white women and asian women we need to make a change in the way we conduct our lives if we want to create a brighter future for our black sons and our black daughters we need to start now making a change in the way we conduct ourselves the change starts with each of us don't wait for president biden to make the change don't wait for the president of your country don't wait for oprah winfrey to make the change you are a human god has given you the ability to make changes it starts with you okay it starts with you oh white women are richer oh white women have more opportunities oh all these asians their businesses do well who says our businesses cannot do well who says we cannot build wealth the god that created white women and asian women did they was it a different god that created them it's the same god guys it's the same god i know about racism i know about prejudice i've experienced all of it none of it has stopped me okay now so because some of you will come now you know the prejudice and the racism okay all right okay yes i know i know but what are you doing to make your life better if you're elevating your life prejudice will not touch you hello if you're elevating your life racism will not touch you so please enough with the excuses enough i don't have money to pay for coaches you have money to pay for coaches where did you get money to buy your wigs where did you get money to buy all your chanel bags i see all of you on instagram with all your designer shoes and designer bags but you'll say you don't have three thousand seven hundred and fifty to pay for coaches i don't want to say you're lying but you are lying you do have the money i see all of you who say you don't have money for coaches you have money to adorn yourself to wear chanel clothes and fendi clothes and fendi bags and fendi shoes and all the thousand 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 dollar things you put on your body but you don't have money for coaches and you'll come to our dm and be asking for free coaching no we don't have free coaching go and sell all the fendi and gucci bags and chanel bags and go and buy bags from walmart to pay for coaching yes i said it before i started buying chanel bags and all of those i had worked my business was already making millions of dollars before I started make, spending money on nonsense. Yes, I may have bought one or two designer bags, but I was earning a lot of money already. Some of you don't have money, but you keep on buying all this Chanel and all these things you can't afford. Buying cars to show off to people that don't care about you, but you don't have money for self-development. I'm out of here. Bye, guys. I love you all. The replay will be on my YouTube. I'll see you again soon. If you're just joining, you're joining late please go and subscribe to my youtube dr yabo webzel the video the replay will be on there get your tea get your snacks 
watch this video replay over and over and over on my YouTube. Let it sink in. Then come to my DM or Tammy's DM and come and sign up for our coaching. And if you don't feel you need coaching, good luck to you. Okay, good luck. Bye, guys. Love you all. God bless. Bye.